What is it that sets Curator apart from any other SIEM out there in the market? For Let's first start by analyzing what are the problems and the challenges that most SIEMs have today. They all have a correlation engine, some databases, uh, you know, some different technologies for that. And they all are fed from logs from multiple devices, databases, operating systems, networking equipment, but logs, nevertheless. And they produce, after correlating all that data, what uh, some of them call incidents. Some call them cases. We prefer to call them offenses. And what's the problem with all that? Well, uh, there are at least three type of problems. Number one, it takes forever. People get SIM fatigue. You need to configure all the system and tell them what all the servers are, you know, that all, and, and you need to keep those up to date and incorporate new sources of, of logs. So you typically have to maintain an army of people, small army of people, which costs a lot of money these days, to keep your SIEM up to date. So people restrict the usage of the SIEM to those things that, are, for example, are required for SOCs or PCI and nothing more than that. The other problem with most of those systems is that you get way too many false positives. So what happened with that is that people don't don't listen to it anymore. I mean, if you if you give me five, ten things to do in a day, I can deal with those. But if you give me a hundred, hundred and fifty, I just you know, you know, become uh, I'm no longer sensible, uh, sensitive to to all those things. Uh, anymore. The, ser the third problem, which is actually very big, is that they miss a lot of important things. You, know, you put the SIEM, you feel protected, then something happened, and how come our, our SIEM uh, didn't catch that? Well, let me explain you, we don't listen to this, and this was special and all that. Well, let me tell you how Curator actually changes all that. What Curator does, it, it incorporates information that we call flows. And flows are records about the conversation. These are not logs at all. These are records about the conversation that is actually happening between uh, routers, switches, etc. For example, Cisco called those end flows. This IP address is talking to that IP address over this port, you know, the nature of, of that information. Uh, Juniper calls those J flows. Uh, but these are basically layer seven, la layer four, sorry, networking data about what's happening out there. We also incorporate another important piece that we call Q flow, which is actually very nice because it's, it goes all the way to layer. Seven. It goes to the application. So we can actually see what is chatting data, and that's good to detect, you know, uh, bot uh, talking to their masters uh, over RSC uh, traffic. We can see people sending, for example, a PDF in the middle of night, and we can actually see the content of the PDF and see whether in there or anywhere else, for example, there is a social security number or a credit card information going. That's actually very powerful, and that allows us, this gives us a lot of context, so we don't miss a lot. In fact, we hardly miss things. And, but the, the situation gets even better because we also incorporate B-Flow, which is the information that comes from uh, virtualization. So information about the traffic that is normally going to the hypervisor, we can actually incorporate all that in spite of the fact that you have all these things uh, virtualized. So we feed all that data into our correlation engine, but we don't stay with just that. We also feed asset information. Well, and why, what is that, that asset information? Well, there are several kinds, and I'm going to go just through some of them. For example, one of the things that we automatically collect is the type of device. 
because we look at those flows and we understand all this networking lingo, we know when a DNS is talking, so well, we identify, well, that's a DNS server. Same thing with an email server. So, and this is actually good context information for, because, for example, if we see a workstation sending a ton of email, well, that might be that that workstation is used for spam, uh, for sending spam. But if the email comes from an email server, well, that might be a, a marketing campaign and that, that, that's something good. Uh, we, 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 we identify when it's a DHCP, uh, a DHCP server, uh, normal workstations, etc. So, and we automatically feed that information into our configuration and present to the operator, well, this is all the things that I found. So, this your deployment doesn't take forever. We actually facilitate that dramatically. We also take, uh, as, as an information, data from vulnerability scanners. And so that's the active way of really, you know, we, we take feed from, let's say, an ASUS or anyone, uh, any other vulnerability scanner, and we, we we, we know that a particular device is vulnerable to a particular attack. And we also see dynamically things like, for example, a buffer, this is just an example, buffer overflow attempt. And for example, if we know that there's a buffer overflow going on, and we know also that that particular device is vulnerable to those uh, buffer overflow, well, that, that increases the what we call the magnitude of this event and, and really highlights uh, that, that uh, that as an important offense. We also take information from other sources like uh, um, MAC addresses from uh, the DHCP logs. Uh, more very important, we also, because we see when people are logging in into systems here and there, we take user information. We know that a particular user is at that I particular IP at that particular time of the incident. So that, that's actually very useful. It's, it's one thing to say IP, whatever, whatever. And you can say, well, this particular user is actually uh, experiencing this particular behavior. And we do that because Q1 specializes in an area which is network behavior anomaly detection. And we excel out of that besides collecting the logs. And we can make sense out of all these. In fact, the more the merrier. So. And because we can autom automate the process of detecting what's in there and we do it dynamically, we really facilitate the deployment and you don't need to have that army of people uh, to actually maintain uh, the system. Because we put also context information around all these, we eliminate very many of the false positive facts. We filter information and typically we give you a handful of incidents for you to actually deal with. Some of those are offenses that you actually need to uh, that take care of. And because we collect information from so many sources, we don't miss a thing. But some people say, well, but, but you know what? I already have my, my, my SIEM infrastructure and uh, it's surely collecting logs and uh, it's producing some information and I don't want to throw all that away because, you know, it costs a lot of money and I have all that, that thing invested in there. Well, what you can actually do is that you can have a QRadar box actually collecting all those flows and collecting all those uh, asset information and have it, it feed your SIEM so you can make your SIEM installation far more capable.